Good morning, hi, I'm Christian. I'm one of the worship pastors at I-61 Church in North Wales. I'm in a caravan park in the bar, actually, where we do a lot of our preparation and make some noise ready for our Sunday morning services, uh, where we meet in a school hall just down the road. I've had a lot of conversations um, online, via email and face-to-face, about how we can use loops and how we can use click tracks to kind of enhance the worship time in our, ser- in our Sunday services. We run two distinct services, both in the morning, and we run a monthly worship event called Reconnect. And in both of them, we're starting to tap into some of the available technology. Now, for some of you, this will be brand new. For some of you, this will be quite old school, uh, and you're way ahead of us already. But I thought I'd give a quick tutorial on how we've got things set up, because it may be a help to some of you out there trying to work out how you can supplement some of those sounds within your worship team. So I've got my pedal board set up. I've got my uh, MacBook ready to go. So let me show you some of the things that we're doing at the moment. Okay, so this is my setup, this is my pedal board. Uh, if I pan over here, you'll see my, one of my electric guitars and my Taylor, which I tend to lead off quite a lot. And then over here, on the music stand, we've got my MacBook Pro. All of this is framed by a beautiful carpet here in the bar. Um, my MacBook I don't usually put on a stand, it's just to make things a little bit easier. And if we can kind of zoom in there, you'll see that we're running a program called Ableton Live. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. So down on the floorboard, uh, we've got two sides of it really. We've got my Pod X3 Live, which I tend to just run straight into the PA. Um, Both guitars go in on different inputs and they can both come out on different outputs if I like. Each patch will activate which guitar I'm using. It will also activate any effects or preamps or amp modeling which I put in there. My Taylor tends to run quite clean through just with a bit of EQ and then I've got the option to put in some reverb, some delay or a little bit of chorus if I choose to. Uh, And then my electric guitars will tend to be um, song specific in there. So if we scroll through, although you probably can't see, into the fourth patch, I've got some sounds set up ready for Sunday. So I've got a Telecaster sound. Um, I've got Glory to God, which is one of the songs that we do by Steve Fee and Vicky Beeching. Um, and All Glory and a few others kind of mixed in there. Um, I also will often run my vocal into my Pod X3 Live. I found the preamps and some of the effects on there are really good. So I run from my microphone into the board and then I can just give two or three XLRs going to the back for them for my instruments and for my vocal. Then this side of the board over here, we've got a controller made by um, Custom Works in America by a chap called Baron Yown. Um, really great controller, designed specifically for Ableton and for worship leaders. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the link to their website. Below that, we've got a, a FireWire device, um, which works as my MIDI interface and also some audio outputs. That's an M Audio 410, which I got cheap off eBay. And behind that's just a second expression pedal, which I use for doing some of the, the pad swells, which I'll show you in a moment. So, basic setup on this, the Ability Controller has a cable for the expression pedal, it has a MIDI cable and a power cable. The MIDI cable goes down into the box below, into the FireWire device here. There's the FireWire cable going up to my MacBook, and then over here, at the moment it's just one orange cable, just to give you a demo, but usually that would be three outputs coming out of there. One for click left, uh, sorry, one for the loop left, one for the loop right, and one just for the click track, which would go to the sound desk and then be fed back just into our ears or into the drummer's ears um, so that we can stay in time with the metronome. So that's basically how it works. Then up on Ableton, on the MacBook, you'll see that down this side over here, and you can see my cursor, we've got all my different songs which we tend to use click tracks for. Uh, and we tend to do clicks in one or two ways. Some clicks, such as um, Hosanna, we tend to do the same arrangement all the way through, so that's just one audio f- file. Um, if we go and have a look at something like Happy Day, for example, Happy Day we tend to do in sections and have different arrangements of. So you can see there that we've got one line, which is the click off, then the intro, then the verse, then the chorus, the breakdown, the bridge, and so on. So let me demo this with Happy Day. So Happy Day is my second song of the set on Sunday, so it's programmed into Bank 2. And if I was to trigger off the first button, you will hear the click come through. Now, on a Sunday morning, that click would only be either in our in-ear monitors or in the drummer's ears, depending on how we're running it. And the great thing with Ableton is Ableton will always trigger off on the first beat of the bar. So if I press the next button, which will be our intro button, that actually won't trigger until we get round to the start of the next phrase. So the drum would usually click in on three and four. So one, two, three, four. And then we can press that button. And we can have the intro section of Happy Day running through with the guitars, the bass and everything else going off it. And you can see in Ableton we've set up some automation. So when it finishes the intro, it moves straight on to verse 1. And you can see that it's flashing ready to go on to the chorus as well. Now, 
Ableton gives us quite a bit of flexibility because we can trigger off any section. If I wanted to go back and do the intro section again, I can just highlight the intro button, press it, and on the first beat of the bar, it'll go back and trigger that off. And let me just pause that a moment to show you. We've also got a couple of other features within this ability controller that makes things brilliant for worship. We've got an Omni mode, so by pressing this button here, and holding it down, we can actually get into our Omni section. And this allows me to set master controls within Ableton. So I've got a, an emergency stop if things go wrong. I've got a play to start them again if I want to. I've got a tap control so I can bring everything in time if we're slightly out. And I've got a button here which will simply just turn the metronome on and off, which can be useful for certain parts. So if I press play, you'll hear it back on. I can turn the metronome off. Put it back in. And then I've got an emergency stop as well. The controller's got 20 banks, and on each bank you've got A, B, C, D, and e, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Um, and we tend to keep the same template within Ableton for every service, uh, all the songs there, and then we'll just simply assign the MIDI controllers to the songs that we want it to control. Now, Happy Day, as I said, we can trigger off in different sections. So we've got a verse one. Sometimes we do uh, a breakdown, so if we do a breakdown, we can just go straight into that. That allows us just to sing the chorus again over a bit of a breakdown. We've got the bridge section, oh what a glorious day. Full of different pads and sounds. And then when we run this song at Reconnect, our youth event, we mix it with a little bit of Black Eyed Peas. So you see down here on the bottom line, you've got a file that says, I've got a feeling. Sorry, let me turn that off. You see, I've got a feeling instrumental mixed with Happy Day. So when we trigger that one off, we kind of sing verse two, when I stand over this. So we've got, when I stand in that place. Give it a really good lively feel. And then when we get to the end of this section, rather than going back into the verse, uh, or back into the chorus, we just have a bit of a musical break that we borrowed from the Black Eyed Peas. So I'll just let that play a second so you can get an idea. Here we go. And you can see I've just set a crossfade there, so I've chosen the section of I've got a feeling that I want. I transposed it into C where we do Happy Day. And when it finishes this one, it just carries on playing. We've got a couple of musical breaks to make it a bit of interesting. And then we've set this for a certain number of bars, and when it finishes, it goes straight into the bridge and the final chorus of Happy Day. So I don't have to control every section if I don't want to. I can pre-program to flow. So here we go into Oh What A Glorious Day. And that will run then until it goes into the final couple of choruses and Happy Day will finish. So that's how we run a song when we've got um, lots going on and we want to have a bit of control. There's other songs that we might do. So One Way, for example, which we tend to do very much in a set arrangement. We tend to use a lot of electronic sounds in here. So let me trigger off One Way without the metronome just so you can hear how that sounds. So the click's just coming in, which you can't hear because that's just in the drum it is. Then we've got a little bit of electro electronic guitar, uh, a little bit of electronic pads and stuff going on there just to kind of liven up One Way. But again, because this is in the set arrangement, we'll press a button and we'll let that throw through the meeting and you hear the verse will come in now. The other way that we tend to use loops is we've got different band arrangements within I-61. So, for example, we've got two keys players, uh, one who tends to play a lot of pianos and play some really lovely parts, and one who plays a lot of pads and haunting sounds, very different in their style. So our loops tend to be a little bit programmed to complement who we have and who we don't have. So we've got a version of Mighty to Save, which has quite a lot of piano in it. And we tend to try not to use that one when Jackie's playing piano, um, because we're doubling up on sounds. But when we've got Alex playing pads, it sits in really nicely because it's a gap in one of our instruments there. So Mighty to Save. Again, our lead guitar player at the moment, unfortunately, has had to leave the country. So we've been forced to kind of record some of our electric guitar parts. So in Mighty to Save, in this original recording, there's maybe four guitars. We've left a couple of them in this track here for us to use. You can hear the piano coming in, you can hear the intro. But we would put acoustic, we'd put bass, we'd put pads, a couple of guitars if need be, and vocals on top of this, and it'll sit really nicely. All those other songs that we do, so maybe um, there's a song by Chris Tomlin called I Will Rise, and if I can just find that one, that's very orchestral. So we've got lots of cellos and lots of strings in this section. 
and again we've got two versions of this one with a piano and one without so if we we don't do this song currently but when we start to do this song in church then we'll be able to do that and again without doing a lesson in Ableton we've got a lot of controls down the bottom here where we can set the, the gain, we can set the key, we can do a little bit of transposing, we can set pointers for where it may loop back and go on, etc, etc. Um, give you another one, we've got Jesus Saves, very similar to the, the um, Tim Hughes album version. So we'll put a metronome in for this one to make it a little bit easier to follow. And we've got two versions, we've got a simple version that we might do if we don't want an extended intro, or we've got one with a full intro as per the album. So... <laughs> That just gives you an idea. And again, as I said, um, it gives us a lot of ability to be able to give these parts out to people. So we can actually give that out, highlighting maybe some of the guitar parts or the bass parts for people to learn. Uh, and as and when we get um, restocked with musicians and we have another lead guitar player come back into the church and, and kind of step up to join the worship team, we can start altering our loops to cut out some of those lead guitar parts as well. Um, but it just means that for um, a church with, with really great musicians, we can really enhance our sound and kind of fill in some of the gaps. Last thing to show you is one of our, our newest kind of additions to Ableton and that's this top section that you'll see in white here and what we've done is we've simply recorded uh, and got hold of some ambient pads in every different key that's available so we've got 12 different keys and we've got about seven minute loops and these loops just kind of play for seven minutes and loop round. What we've done is they're full of guitar swells, a little bit of keyboard pads so the non really the non-note specific so we can play most chord sequences over them and it just gives us a nice bit of um, control on a Sunday morning of kind of being able to layer up some sounds. So if I go back to bank one here, bank one is my, my keys um, and the way that I've programmed them there's only really six keys that I, we tend to use a lot Sunday to Sunday so they're the ones that are always there. So I've got A, B, C, D, E and G um, and I've skipped out F and skipped out the the flat keys. So if I wanted to trigger off a pad in A, I can simply press the A button and you'll hear that start to swell and it just sits there on the A line and I can come in with any song pretty much in the key of A. Now this expression pedal at the back here is then mapped in to control the volume of those pads. It's not set up at the moment because I'm just still configuring that pedal. But then that will give me the facility to actually fade in and fade out just that pad line by matching the MIDI up to this volume control here, which is just on the pad line. Um, so then, if I wanted to fade that one out, I could simply just get over the pedal and fade that down nicely into service. I'm doing that manually on the computer now, but it gives you the idea, and fade that out. I want to trigger off a different one, let's say in C. I can then fade that back up. In C, to play some sounds over it. So sorry if that was really basic to some of you, uh, hopefully it's been of a help to others. Um, any questions feel free to get in touch, email address is at the bottom of the screen. And if you want to get ideas of where we got some of the loops from, how we made them, some of the templates, then drop me a line, I'd be more than happy to help. God bless and, and I hope that this has been helpful to you. Take care.